Right. First of all, let me say thank you for coming uh, for today, which was, uh, I mean, the Rogers, Rogers Scruton in Eastern Europe uh, for 40 years, a member of the workshop. Uh, well, just let me say a few words about the, um, Martin, uh, Martin Fiala. He's doing a PhD research at the, Depart uh, the Department of the History at uh, Masaryk University in Bruno and focusing Roger Scrooge on activities in Czes Czechoslovakia between 1979 uh, and 1989. Yes, uh, the first visit uh, from the events surrounding the Velvet Revolution. Uh, but my question is, uh, in your view, why did Czechoslovakia become the focus of attention for Scruton? Uh, what was the connection there? Well, thank you very much for inviting me to, to this uh, symposium or uh, conference. Um, as for Roger Scruton and his relationship to Czechoslovakia, um, it started in 1979, as, uh, as my research begins, and um, he was very hesitant to go at first. He, he sort of, uh, uh, you know, had a lot of things on his plate and very sort of, he was going through divorce during that year with his first wife. So, you know, it took quite a while to persuade him to get to Czechoslovakia. Uh, the truth of the matter is that, first of all, he, he liked Czechoslovakia and uh, sort of underground flat seminars for the fact that they didn't, took philosophy just as a sort of academic um, as a sort of academic uh, course or or something where people go to sleep they uh, they saw philosophy as a way to deal with the with the regime mentally with the uh, with the sort of uh, depression and the cynicism and the lies that were surrounding them because philosophy ultimately is about finding the truth so I think he was he was very surprised how they saw uh, and sort of uh, dealt with philosophy, and also on his personal level, he fell in love in Czechoslovakia with a, with a lady he met, with a young woman he met, uh, you know, the first second day he arrived there. So he was charmed by her, and they had a relationship for a couple of years, which which then unfortunately. Uh, due to you know various circumstances, but, but also the regime because of it, it, it fell apart. And uh, just my question, I mean, the next question would be like, uh, how do you think Scruton has become a thinker in this, re in this region? Well, you might have some, some um, give some answer already for this, but if you don't mind to speak about, you know, a bit more. Um, how, how he became such a significant thinker yes. there. Um, I think I think it's uh, because many many different things. Uh, he was uh, provocative. Uh, he had he brought this idea of of, of free thinking, uh, free discussion, all these things that people were forbid forbidden to do, and uh, he. He has this incredible uh, achievement of uh, creating with other sort of Western academics the Jan Hus Educational Foundation, an uh, uh, institution which uh, sort of collected money from various other donors and foundations and used this money to fund the uh, flat seminars to, to create this alternative educational system in Czechoslovakia which young people could visit and could learn and could sort of grow as human beings because they weren't allowed allowed to do that for many reasons, for many other reasons in the communist regime that Czechoslovakia was under. And so he has these, you know, great achievements uh, in his portfolio related to Czechoslovakia. Thank you. And my last question is, uh, what makes Roger Scruton IWG uh, still up to date in our current times? I think Roger Scruton, um, uh, he, he said the sort of basic truths about, about our, our lives and he was able, which is very rare in academia, he was able to pinpoint 
things that really matter to us. Um, and he not only talked about these things, he he turned them into practice. He and very often in my you know I'm, I'm a historian, uh, I'm studying humanities. Uh, it's very easy for us to just talk and talk and talk. And he understood and and sort of practice all his all all the things he thought, and he tried to turn them into practice. He was a very proactive person. And um, I think that summarizes philosophy. It's it's his philosophy. It's not just it's not just the talking and the writing. It's also doing. And um, uh, I think I'm very sort of uh, I, I like his I like his sort of um, approach to life that the big changes come from uh, from the little people. It comes from the bottom. It comes from doing doing the ordinary the, the the helping people around you in your sort of in your closest circle that's what starts these big changes and he was i think big believer in that and uh i think i think that's that's something that's still very timeless and everybody can you know take an example from that <laughs> well hopefully it has a future <laughs> well, uh, let me say thank you for Martin Fiala to spending a few, few minutes with us for a po short podcast. And yeah, let me say again, well, thank you for coming. Thank you very much for the, for the invitation. Thank it you. Was a pleasure to talk to you. Great. Thank you.